<sighs> All right. I'm good. Um, oh, very nervous. <laughs> Well, I think a lot of people are nervous when they're talking about something like this. It's perfectly normal to be nervous, but I promise anything that you don't feel comfortable with, I'll edit out, uh, as I said before. And if you need to take a break, like pause to get some water or just like think, that's fine. Just let me know. So do you want to start by introducing yourself and oh, yeah. a little bit about what we're here to talk about? Well, um, uh... I'm just gonna, I guess, go by Kumori because I don't, I don't really necessarily want to be attached to this or really my past, mm -hmm. um, which is like maybe kind of like me running from my past. I don't know, but um, but yeah. So uh, I'm just gonna go by Kumori if that's okay. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, so. I basically wanted to talk about something that happened back in 2012 uh, to 2013 and affected my life up until 2000, I mean really up until 2018, but really severely up until 2015. Um, so I guess, should I just like start from the beginning? Yeah, I guess, yeah, start wherever you want. Um, so, uh, I met, uh, I'm really nervous about talking about this, I'm it's sorry. Um, no, it's alright. I started watching, um, creepypasta narration videos when I was about 12 years old. Um, maybe a little bit earlier, because I, I was, my sister got me into, like, creepypastas and everything. And so I started listening to narrators on YouTube, and, um... I came across a channel called uh, Creeps McPasta, and uh, I was really like intrigued by his voice, I guess. Um, and I was like, I don't know, I I, I wanted to reach out to him um, and just see if he would like reply to me because I was at that point like I was a fan, even though like he barely had any subscribers um i really liked what he put out so i messaged him on youtube um back when there was messages um on youtube yeah. and uh i don't remember it was basically just like me fangirling um and then he was like oh you know thank you know thank you so much like because i told him i liked you know his voice and it was kind of cringy obviously because i was 12. yeah um but we ended up, um, like, swapping Skypes, or I, I, I guess I gave him my Skype, or he gave me his. And we started talking from there. Um, I remember the first night that we ever started talking on voice call, um, I was playing Minecraft, um, and I, I remember so vividly, like, while we were talking, it, I don't know how, how this sticks in my mind, like, but, like, I was, like, spawning chickens all over the place. It's irrelevant, really. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we ended up talking just casually until, like, 2 a.m. Because, I mean, I at that point, I didn't have, like, a good sleep schedule. I was on the computer all the time. So, um, at that point, we, we started playing Minecraft together, um, like, on servers and stuff. Um, and he actually, he has... A gaming channel where that's one of the first things that he started uploading because I told him that he should upload gaming videos um, but anyway um, I remember one of the first like flirting instances um, was I mean I don't know what initiated like cuz it I suppose, like, he probably knew that I, I liked him a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, on Minecraft, he had made uh, a huge, like, pixel art uh, or block art uh, thing of my face. Um, like, back then, you know, I had, like, blue hair, half blue and half black hair. And, uh, yeah, so he spent, like, hours making that on Minecraft, and I don't know, that was, like, pretty big to me back then. Like, that yeah. meant a lot. Um, Can I just ask a couple questions? 
So yeah. at the at the time, did you know how old he was? Yeah. Okay. And how old was he at the time? He was twenty one. Okay. And did he know that you were thirteen? Yeah. We we would like joke about how like we were the reverse age, you know, like because he was twenty one and I was twelve. Okay. But 12. but now I just realize like that's uh, anyway. Um, okay. So he knew that you were not just a minor, but a very young minor, that you were in elementary school at the time. Yeah, or, well, or I wasn't school. in elementary, uh, middle school, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like in my first or second year of middle school. Um, yeah, so, and, and I was very isolated from like, I, I didn't have any friends at school, so I was like, oh, uh, I mean, the internet, like uh, people that I met on, on video games, they were my life, you know? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so uh, we started like video chatting too. Um, and I remember he used to wear uh, like a Pikachu onesie all the time. And eventually I wanted a Pikachu onesie too. Um, and he actually uh, sent me money, um, which I I only remember that he sent me money for that because I was looking through my emails and I saw the PayPal like messages and like the the money sent and then like a a couple days or a few days later I bought the the onesie and I have like a really cringy picture of me like with a Pikachu onesie on and a top hat cuz uh, yeah, I, I wanted to be like part of the creepy pasta world too, so I wanted to make like a persona kind of thing, like they did. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, eventually, I, I, I guess I like told him that I was pretty interested in uh, like narrating myself, so um, he wanted to help me, and um, he added me to a group chat of narrators. Um, well, let me just make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, totally fine. Yeah. So, um, I when I entered this group chat, uh, I think there was like, at m- like maybe like five or six uh, narrators. Most of them were new, mm-hmm. um, and uh, we had we were like voice chatting a lot. Like it was typically a group um, of people just talking. Um, and that's where I met Creepy Pasta Jr. So Creepy Pasta Jr. He's another Creepy Pasta YouTuber person who you yeah. were talking to. Yeah. And uh, when you were talking to him, like, what kind of things would you talk about? Was was he like sexually interested in you or anything like that? Well, when we first started talking in the group chat. Um, I mean, he was just, like, I don't think he even really talked to me at all in the group chat until um, I added him personally, and we started direct messaging back and forth. And um, I think it started with the... He was, like, very interested in gore, which I understand. I guess it's part of, like, the whole creepy thing. Um, But he... I, I don't remember how old he was. I think he's also, he was in his 20s as well. Um, I think a little bit older than Creeps McPasta. But he sent me, um, like, links to gore that he thought I should check out. Like gore and, movies? Or, or like, like videos or in pictures. Of just, like, gory images, like violent images? Yeah, exactly. Just mostly, like, just dead, like, dead bodies. Uh, and so that, (laughs) I guess at at that time I was very intrigued and I was like, oh, like, let me keep looking into this. And I, I just like kept looking into it. And, um, later that night, I remember he, he asked if I wanted to like voice, like call him. And, um, when we got in the call, Um, he basically was telling me that it would be like a fantasy of his to see me run over by a car. Um, like it'd be like 
sexually pleasing to him. Uh, and I, I thought that that was like, Did you I don't know? know, like it was the internet. So I, I thought that that was like, maybe just like a weird fetish thing, you know? Um, so but yeah. At the time, how old were you just for clarification? I, I was 12, but. And he was like sharing these sexual, really violent, really I don't even know if it would be kinky to me. That doesn't really seem like kinky to me. That seems like a, a weird fetish that he's forcing onto you without your consent. Cause he never asked if you were interested in that kind of thing. Right. He just sort of started doing it. Yeah. I, I guess at the time, like I, I thought that I just wanted to like do whatever would make them like me. And so I would just take whatever they would say um especially like w w at like that voice call um but i remember that night very vividly because i've never like had a feeling like that in my life where like my body was just like numb and i just couldn't stop like it was like i was going to say like watching a train wreck but it's like listening to like a train wreck i don't know it's uh, anyway um okay. so uh so, at that point, I started getting more into actually narrating, um, and I had only, like, done a few recordings, um, some of them for, um, Creeps McPasta's YouTube channel, um, I'm, there's two videos that I featured in, um, one is called Jessica, um, and then... I forgot what, the, oh, the other one was like a collaboration for, I think, Halloween or something. And in a different style of writing. Much more blocky and sharp than the rounded edges of the newer writing. You kept me close. We were the best of friends. Then you broke me, killed me, and then discarded me. I will never die. I'm too close to your heart. The thing that is the most embarrassing to me, <laughs> um, I had sent a picture to Creeps. Um, is this Creeps McPasta, the, the first one that you started yeah, talking Yeah, exactly. To? Okay. Yeah, Creeps McPasta. Um, I had sent him a picture, um, of like my genitals um okay. with uh like a drawing of like like cat ears and like whiskers and um i remember on facebook like he he commented about it like saying like you know i'm never gonna like get rid of that picture or like i'm never gonna stop looking at that picture um and so Eventually, uh, or sorry, yep. Can I just, I, I, before we move on, I just want to say that I know you said that was embarrassing, um, and I, I'm sure that must be like embarrassing and traumatic to admit, but the fact that a grown man in his 20s was getting a nude picture from an underage girl is in no way ever the individual's fault. Like, that was not your fault, and you shouldn't feel bad about yourself because of it. He um, knew what he was doing and he knew that he was manipulating you and it should have been, you shouldn't have had to go through that situation and I'm sorry that you did. I'm not actually like, sometimes I'm not sure if I know these things, <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate it being told to me like multiple times because you know, it, yeah. Um, so, at that point, my parents, my dad specifically, he finally found out what was going on, um, and he uh, changed the password on my Skype, um, and he deleted the Facebook, and he deleted my YouTube channel that I had just made, and um, and my my YouTube channel back then was uh, Kuro Chan Fox. Um, I made a lot of, like, 
Japanese-based usernames back then. So I started going behind my dad's back to talk to uh, Creeps McFosta, who I knew at the time as Jacob. Um, I don't know what his real name is. I don't know if what's on Google is his real name. I don't know. Uh, but so sorry. It's totally um, fine if you need a second. Take a second. So I don't. I don't even. Oh yes, I do. I had a flip phone. I I was using my phone to um, message creeps on. Facebook um, whenever I was away from my parents and um, yeah there's I mean there's we used to just basically be like really lovey-dovey and like that's one reason why like I guess like it, it hurts so much to like I mean as a kid you don't know who's being serious or not or like who's actually like who has good intentions and cares about you and I thought that he cared about me. Um, did he? So, oh, sorry. No, you go. I was, I was just going to ask, did he say things like that? Like, would he say things to imply that you two were in a relationship that wasn't just sexual and that he cared yes. about you? Yes. Yeah. I mean, in, in every context, pretty much, we were talking about being like boyfriend and girlfriend and saying I love you literally constantly. Like, Like, basically, it was like, like a a 12 year old's relationship except he was 21 and acting like a 12 year old um yeah so so i continue talking to him on facebook and eventually they found that out too and when i had everything taken away from me um i i had I had gone to the bathroom and um, considered drinking bleach, but I didn't um, because I've heard it's not pleasant. Uh, yeah. So I I ended up telling my parents anyway that I tried, and the next day um, I go to school, and I thought everything was normal, I guess. I mean, it was a normal, like, depressing day for me, you know, but I get called to the office, and there's police there to interview me, <laughs> and I eventually get sent to a crisis center, um, but before I went to the crisis center, I went home to pick up some stuff, and immediately go on the computer to talk to creeps, because I just, like, I don't know, like, I... I couldn't see what was going on, and I thought yeah. that, like, he was, like, you know, really, I don't know, he was important to me, so, mm -hmm. um, so, I remember telling him, you know, uh, like, please, you know, I, I can't talk to you anymore, you know, I'm not gonna be allowed to, but please, like, wait for me, like, uh, uh, well, actually, no, no, I said, he was the one that said, like, please, like, you know, wait for me, like, don't, like, you know, don't forget about me. Mm -hmm. But he was speaking in, like, not proper grammar, like, all lowercase, so it just didn't sound like, like, he seemed off. Yeah. But he was still saying these things, like, like, you know, I'll wait for you, like, please wait for me. And mm -hmm. I was like, of course, you know. Because you thought you loved him. I, I, yeah. <laughs> or you, or you did love him, but it wasn't yeah, I mean, a healthy love. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know, I think after I got out of the crisis center, I wasn't allowed on the computer anymore, um, until, until I was, like, three months later with supervision, but mm -hmm. the supervision wasn't very good, and so I would still open tabs to talk to him, and it just, like, I would continuously go back to him, you know? Um, and he would always, like, be there, like, to just, yeah. Um, so, anyway, I come to find out, right, uh, when I turned 15, um, I messaged him again, and it had been, like, a year and a half, or two years, um, and two years since we had last talked, 
mm-hmm. and he had gotten a, an adult girlfriend um, and just forgotten about me. He was like, not like nothing happened. He was just like literally talking like nothing happened on messaging, like messenger or like Skype messenger. Mm-hmm. Um, and you felt, and yeah, yeah. How did you feel after that? I mean, I feel like he was, like, genuinely the first person that I, like, actually loved, and I didn't realize, well, okay, now I realize that people, people who like children, they don't like them for their personalities. Yes. They like them because they're children. (laughs) And, um, that's what I was. I was just a child, and... He yeah. wasn't interested in you at the end of the day. And once you started to get older, he lost interest and found someone else. And I mean, I understand why he wasn't interested in me. Because looking back, I was incredibly cringy because I was, like, I was a child. I, like, ev- half the things I said didn't even make sense. Like, grammatically together, like, it, it just was nonsensical, half the stuff that I said. Yeah, but you, know? you were a kid. Yeah, and I would talk so much about school and, like, and messaging him at school, and, like, I remember one time, I'm like, you know, why do you ask me to message you at school, or, like, when I'm at school, when you don't answer me back, you know? Um, yeah. But, yeah. So, whatever happened with, um, Junior, Mr. Mr. Creepypasta Junior, or what was his name, Creepypasta Junior? There's so many of them. <laughs> yeah, and they're all very similar. Um, yeah. I mean, I was, I had really kind of stopped talking to him after that, that call that we had. Um, I don't think that, like, it was maybe like a tapered off, like, kind of thing, but I wasn't very invested in him as a person, you know, Um, especially because he didn't show like that, like, Actually, like, like that lovey-dovey type of thing that Creeps McPasta was, or Jacob, mm-hmm. I don't know, <laughs> Nicholas, um, was showing. He was just, Junior was very upfront and, like, aggressively sexual. And um, violent toward you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Over- in his weird Over- fetish that he has. I, I don't like to... I don't like to, like, um, call out people's, like, fetishes and, like, say that it's, like, not right, but it was not right for me to hear that as a kid or yeah. be a part of that. I mean, any uh, fetish, regardless of, like, how innocent it is or anything sexual, regardless of how normal or innocent it is, should never be shared with a child if you're an adult. I mean, ideally, children wouldn't I, be knowing about those things with each other either, but adults certainly should not be showing children kinks and fetishes and things like that i'm quite positive that that was part of the fetish that he had was the fact that i was a kid and so like stupid and not knowing like what's going on um i remember after that call too he um he had actually he had actually masturbated, and um, I don't know if I can say that. I just like tried to blurt it out because I <laughs> so, just say so, whatever you want. Don't worry about being censored because I don't want what you're saying to have to be censored. You know, and you don't actually get your story. Um, and after he was done, um, he just started playing Pokemon and like just like nothing happened. Or or was it? He just like started talking like nothing happened. Like I don't, I don't know. I yeah. I feel like it's it's almost like a pattern. Like mm-hmm. like something huge will happen, and then they'll just act like nothing happened. Yeah, um, that is definitely a pattern I've noticed with any type of predator, especially like child predators. They will 
push the limits of what someone is comfortable with and do something that's sexual and inappropriate and makes the person uncomfortable or feel like humiliated or degraded and then immediately after that they'll move on and go on to something else and that's and, and mm -hmm. I almost sorry I no, feel like it almost makes like especially as a kid it makes it feel like oh okay so that was okay like that was yeah. fine like you're not apologizing or anything so we can move on I guess like yeah exactly that's like a, a grooming tactic to get children used to horrible acts of sexual abuse and I have seen that so many times with Davi and with other mostly with Davi but in other cases that I've looked into so, and I feel like Oh, like, sorry. One important thing that I want to say, like, last, I guess, is mm -hmm. kids, people, like, the age that I was, which is a kid, like, you can't deny it. It's not even, like, it's a preteen, I guess. It's so cool to be in an environment with adults, it, but it's, in, like, nearly impossible to actually see if you're being manipulated or not when you're a kid. So I agree. Um, I just have a couple other questions that I wanted to ask about the creepypasta community and, and them. How much do you think um, creepypasta junior and Mr. C what was his name? Uh, cr creeps How much did creeps make pasta and creepypasta junior know about each other? they they were really good friends back then. They helped eat, like they were. They started each other's channels up, basically. Okay. So, do you, yeah. Do you think that they were working together to groom you? Or, like, how much about the grooming and sexual stuff did they know? I mean, I, I don't know if they were working together. It didn't... I would hope not, because that would bring, like, another level to it that would just kind of destroy me inside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um... But yeah, I, I mean, they had never, t like, in front of me, they had never talked about me or anything like that. So I, I don't really know. Okay. So to the best of your knowledge, they were just aware that you were all friends together in the same community and that you knew each other, but not that anything sexual was happening or there was any kind of, like, relationship. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to understand a little bit more and get the full context. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that they have done this to other people? In your personal opinion? I I feel like it's probably unlikely that they haven't. So just the fact that they did that to me and then got away with it and then they now have so many, like, so much more followers than before and have never got any repercussions for, like, I don't want to, like, okay, I don't, I don't want this to sound like it's, I, of course, am somewhat spiteful, like, of course, because they hurt me, you know, and they, they messed up a large portion of my childhood, but I just feel like there needs to be some kind of justice, you know? And yeah. and there's if there isn't, there's no way that like a uh, something can be corrected, you know? Like I, I don't I don't see a way that they haven't gone to other or at least been a pr probably a approached by many other girls that were fangirls just like me and didn't have any reason to be like, hey, like, let's keep boundaries, you know? Because yeah. why, why would you? This worked before, you know? Yeah, and if so, they did it once with you, then what's to stop them from doing it again if they never got any kind of repercussions for what they did? Yeah. If it worked the first time. Um, I just want to ask, and I do not want you to think that I'm like accusing you of anything um, or victim blaming you, but I know that people are going to be curious why you never reported it or if you ever reported it. And can you just 
talk a little bit about that? So I, I was still in love with, well, I was in love with Creeps McPasta um, until I was like 15, 16. And at that point, it was just like almost like a, a breakup. Like I had just felt like, okay, like he just doesn't like me anymore. It's whatever. I didn't, this sounds really dumb, but I didn't realize it was an issue until I grew up fully, even with bringing this up in like to multiple therapists, they would always like guide me to the understanding that it wasn't okay, but in my head, it seemed so okay, you know? Yeah. Um, and I was just like trying to fit in. Yeah. I think that makes sense. And I just want to say thank you so much for sharing that with me. And I know that couldn't have been easy. And it's, it's so traumatic to go through something like that at a young age. And it's hard to understand that what you went through was traumatic because I think you don't want to admit that to yourself and you become so desensitized to it that you don't realize it even was abusive until you become an adult. And at that point, you're like, not sure what to do about it because it was so long ago. Yeah. 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 It seems like it's too late now, you know. Well, if you have any questions about filing and you're interested in filing, um, definitely you can still reach out to me about that and I'll try to see what I can do to help you do that because I do think that... I I actually just remembered, I my dad actually did try to file something against Creeps McPasta, but he lives in the UK so he couldn't do anything. Okay. But it wasn't me at all. Okay. I didn't, I was so against my dad getting him in trouble, you know because I still liked him, you know, but my dad tried, um, but he could, he lives in a different continent. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think that makes sense. And a lot of the times people who are looking to sexually abuse children prey upon that, the, the fact that they live in a different place or the fact that it happens online or the knowledge that the child thinks they're in a relationship and won't want to press charges. All of those things can be used against children so that they can continue to hurt others and never face any justice. And it's so sad to see that. I just, I hope it's not continuing. But if it is, I, please, please say something. Just to, to anybody close to you, just say something. Because yeah. you don't want to lose part of your childhood. Do you, think, yeah. do you think this changed you in a long-term way? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm, I, I, wouldn't, so. I wouldn't be the same person I am today, which I guess, you know, I'm, I'm happy with who I am, so I wouldn't want to change anything from my past, you know. I think everyone th thinks that same way, typically. But uh, it's a lot of trauma that I've had to deal with for years. Yeah. Well, I think it's very normal to be happy with who you are and not want to change, but you shouldn't have ever had to go through that and you shouldn't have to overcome trauma. You shouldn't have to recover from your childhood in order to become a healthy adult. You should just become an adult and then work on becoming the best person you can be. You shouldn't have to heal from traumatic sexual abuse when you're a kid. Yeah, definitely. Well, is there anything else that you wanted to bring up or address? Um, or say to anyone? No, I just, you know, I beg like anyone to please like tell somebody if you are, if something doesn't seem right, like if, if you seem like you're in a situation that's too good to be true, yeah. you know, that's a good time to tell someone. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for speaking with me about this and for having the courage to speak out against these people. And I really hope that we're able to get you some kind of justice. And I'm going to do everything so that I can do to make sure that that happens. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you and like the voice that you give so many people. It's, you're like, 
<laughs> one in a million. I mean, yeah. I haven't seen anyone like you on YouTube, so. Wow, thank you. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I'm like flustered now. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. I really appreciate that. And it was so nice talking to you. I wish we had been talking under better circumstances about something that wasn't yeah. so traumatic and sad, but yeah, it was really nice to be able to talk to you and I hope you have a really good day. Thank you so much. You too. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.